Episode 11. You Never Have to Thank Me. The scenes from the chin house flashed through Olivia's mind. She was curled into a ball, held tightly in Mr. Sniper's arms. She meekly replied, Actually, it's not that big of a deal. It's just that when I think about all the abuse I've endured over the years because of my mother-in-law, I feel so weak. What else? He asked softly. I don't think it was worth it. I could have gone to a prestigious school, but my uncle needed me. He raised me, and I felt responsible to make sure that he was taken care of. Even if it's only for his sake, I can't ignore Janet's games. Mr. Sniper stroked her hair and said in a calm, clear voice, Olivia, life is really just a series of choices. It doesn't matter if you make the wrong choice before and had to deal with the consequences. The next time you're faced with a choice, make sure you take yourself into consideration too. She always felt so much better after talking to him. He was so wise and experienced. She turned her face toward him. Can I ask you a question? Ask away, my dear. How old are you? Someone's feeling curious, huh? Olivia immediately felt embarrassed. I know you like your privacy, she responded quickly. It's fine. It was just a random thought. You don't have to answer. Good girl. He kissed her forehead firmly. Now, it's my turn to ask you a question. She looked at him timidly and nodded. Do you still love Freddy? I want the truth. She found it surprisingly difficult to answer what should have been an easy question. Freddy had been a stranger to her before they had gotten married. They'd had no foundation to build a relationship on. They hadn't even had the opportunity to discuss marriage before they were suddenly thrust into it. It had simply been a coincidence. She had been working at a cafe when she saw a customer who had turned out to be Freddie's grandfather having a heart attack. She had rushed him to the hospital, and in gratitude for her quick thinking, the first thing he had done when he recovered was to tell Freddie to marry her. Both she and Freddie had been stunned by his request. They would have argued with him, but because of his illness, Grandpa Chin wasn't allowed to be agitated. Also, Olivia had been looking for some way to pay for Janet's studies abroad, and no matter how hard she had tried, she hadn't been able to make enough money on her own. Marrying into the Chin family had been a chance to get access to the money that she desperately needed. So, just like that, thanks to her kindness and Grandpa Chin's power and influence, she had become Freddie's wife. Four years into their marriage, she had finally come to terms with her husband's indifference to her. Everyone had said that love would come with time. She had thought that if she served her mother-in-law well, took care of Freddie's daily needs, there would come a day when he would see how good she was. She had invested so much physical and emotional effort toward that goal. However, she knew now that she hadn't been in love so much as accustomed to being Freddie Chin's wife. It had been an abrupt change, no longer serving in that role. After a few moments, Mr. Sniper said, To be fair, you also don't have to answer my question. Olivia smirked. Thank you. You never have to thank me. He was cradling her hand in his, playing with her fingers. You have to learn to be more confident. Confident? She scoffed internally. Olivia forced a smile, trying to swat away the thought that Janet had been right. She had no education, no outstanding abilities, so how could she possibly be confident? Mr. Sniper, how long will you keep seeing me? He chuckled. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know, she shook her head. But you gave me the money to save my uncle. And for long as you choose to keep coming around, I'll do the right thing by you. Whatever you want to eat, I'll cook for you. 
and what I don't know, I can learn. Olivia, what I want is a partner, not a nanny. He said, his voice serious. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll guide you step by step in the future. Let's see what you cooked up for tonight first, shall we? She broke away from his embrace and gave him a brief introduction to the rich and enticing dinner she had arranged. Steamed bass, fried vegetables, beef short ribs, and creamy corn and white radish soup. Does that sound okay? The combination of dishes was nutritious and looked appetizing set out on the table. Very good. He nodded in approval. He sat down at the table and she sat nervously opposite him. If you don't like it, please tell me. I can make it better next time. He tasted the bass and then plucked up a tender vegetable, bringing it to his lips. Olivia's cooking skills were pretty good. The homemade dishes were colorful and fragrant. He quickly finished a small bowl of soup, and before he could say anything, she had already placed another bowl in front of him, looking at him with pleading eyes. Olivia. He set his spoon down beside the bowl and looked at her. What's wrong? She sat up straight, like a schoolgirl waiting for her teacher's criticism. You don't like it? It's delicious. I'm really enjoying it, but... He sighed. Can you please stop looking at me like that? She didn't know how to react. I... I'm a normal, hot-blooded man. No man can resist that look. Do you understand? He saw that she was still confused and didn't understand what he wanted. He felt warm vibrations of desire buzz through his body. He drank the bowl of soup in one gulp and pushed away from the table. Lifting Olivia over his shoulder, he took long, hurried strides to the bedroom and tossed her onto the bed. Startled, she yelped and clutched at the air. She landed safely, cocooned by the soft mattress. Mr. Sniper, his face inches above her own, breathed heavily. His breath was hot on her neck as he placed his lips there. His intent was obvious. Seeing the lust in his eyes, she realized, oh, this is what he meant earlier when he said he couldn't resist. About before, she explained, stammering over her words. I was just staring so intensely because I wanted to know if you liked my cooking or not. Okay. He gently kissed her eyelids, one at a time. Did you cook for Freddy often? She replied, he rarely came home for dinner. Hmm, he replied. Compared to me, is he more gentle or rough? Her body stiffened. This time, she understood that he wasn't talking about cooking. Embarrassed, she asked, Can I not answer that question? Sure. His kiss had already found her mouth, moving to the corner of her lips. He seemed to like it there and lingered for a tantalizingly long while. His kiss was like a feather, lightly brushing against her and opening her heart. She trembled and began to lose herself under his caress until finally he took her over entirely. What followed was yet another night of consuming passion, which led to another morning where she overslept. She was eventually woken by the buzzing of her phone. Lila's name popped up on the screen. She checked the time and realized that it was already past 10 a.m. She was waking up later every day. In the past, when she had lived with the Chin family, if she hadn't been up to make breakfast at 6.30 every morning, her mother-in-law would have had a fit. She felt relieved knowing that was not her life anymore. She raised the phone to her ear. Lila? Lila's voice was filled with excitement. Olivia, we've all been lied to. You can get pregnant. Olivia gulped down a few glasses of water to calm herself down. But she was still trembling when she thought about what Lila had told her. She was healthy 
and could get pregnant. And what's more, the doctor who had diagnosed her with fallopian tube blockage had been paid to do it by Janet. She felt a chill shake her whole body. When had Janet started planning all of this? First, she had seduced Freddy and gotten pregnant to force his hand. Then, she'd bribed the gynecologist to give Olivia a false diagnosis and then mercilessly hired someone to rape and ruin her? It was an expertly spun web, Olivia realized, firmly trapping her the more she struggled, preventing her from breaking free. She had worked so hard to support and help raise that poisonous snake. Lila asked her to meet at a coffee shop across the street from the Hilton. Olivia gulped down another large glass of cold water, changed her clothes, and headed out. Downstairs, she saw Lila's bright red car parked conspicuously at the side of the road opposite the hotel. They met inside the coffee shop and sat down at a table after grabbing their drinks from the barista. Lila slammed her hands on the table, her chest heaving as she started cursing loudly. Janet is inhuman. She's like some vicious beast. And how could Freddy be so blind, leaving such a beautiful and virtuous wife for that venomous vixen? The two of them deserve each other.